this is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. Today I have a very special treat for you. We're going to make some recipes. And one of the questions I hear is, hey John, how do you make some delicious recipes having fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, you know? And people want to buy all these recipe books and all kinds of crazy stuff. But you know what? I just say keep it simple. When it's simple, you're going to do it. And when it's simple, it's going to taste better and it's going to be better for you. I don't like to make recipes with hundreds of ingredients. In fact, most of my recipes that I make it have less than six ingredients and actually both these recipes that I'm going to share with you today have two ingredients. I, mis I recently made a uh, taste like chocolate pie. I think it had about six ingredients, but you can make things that taste really great that are also easy and contain minimal ingredients if you really are creative with what you're using. So today what I'm going to show you and we're going to feature one of my favorite fruits that I get to enjoy when I'm in the tropics and that this, that's this guy right here. This is called the canistel, also known as the egg fruit or yellow sapote. So this thing grows on a tree, and uh, you know when you buy them, they're gonna be they're gonna look like this pretty much, but they're gonna be a little bit glossy. And as they ripen up, it's gonna turn a little bit more dull. So uh, these ones got ripe, so I put them in the fridge so that they'll last. And you don't want to remove the fruit from the skin. Uh, if you do, then the fruit's not gonna last as long. Uh, you know when these guys are ripe, when it's kind of soft like an avocado. If these guys are too hard, they're not going to be good. You don't want to eat it. You know, it, ha it has a little bit of astringency. Um, the canistel, once again, grows in tropical places. It's from Central America, originally like Southern Mexico, around that area. Uh, these guys are absolutely delicious. The reason why they call these egg fruit is because they have a texture of a hard-boiled egg. And if you've never had them before, I can't really describe how they taste, except I could say, say they taste similar to like a pumpkin pie texture. So, I mean, besides this one, another one that tastes like pumpkin pie is mame sapote, which is actually related to the yellow sapote. Now, these guys are actually uh, calorically dense. So these guys pack a lot of energy in there. So these guys have about double the amount of bananas. So can anybody say 15 canistels a day instead of 30 bananas a day? I don't even know if I can eat 15 canistels a day. I mean, these things are actually very rich. And they have, like, sometimes a chalky, gritty texture. So what I'm going to do today is uh, make two recipes that's going to kind of reduce the grit. While I do like to enjoy these straight, these are two simple recipes that you can use so that you can eat all that ripe canistel hanging out in your fridge like I am today. So the first recipe is going to be very simply a uh, smoothie recipe. And my smoothie is simply... Uh, coconuts. I'm going to use two coconuts here, open them up. We're going to get the water and the meat out, put that in the blender. And we're probably going to put one or two canistels in there in the blender, blend that up into a nice, delicious smoothie. These guys are traditionally used like in milkshakes, which I would encourage you to make some uh, coconut milkshakes instead of just regular, you know, milk shakes. Another way you can use these is in like ice creams and desserts. Actually, they freeze well and probably freezing this, putting it through the champion with a blank plate or another juicer uh, with some banana. Actually, that probably tastes amazing, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, the other recipe I'm going to make is very simple, very easy, and it's what I call canistel pudding. We're going to simply take uh, one canistel and one lime. We're going to squeeze the juice of the lime into a bowl with the canistel, mash it all up, and we're going to have some canistel pudding. So that's going to be really delicious. So next, let's go ahead and make that smoothie first. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and open up these canistels. Now you can eat the skin on the canistel. I prefer not to eat the skin on the canistel just because, you know, I don't know exactly how this was grown. I did buy this from the farmer. But I just like to scoop the, uh, the skin off or peel the skin off. So we're just going to take a knife, real simple, real easy, and we're just going to go ahead and cut off the skin. Alright, so I just cut off the skin there and you can see how it kind of looks. There's a few strings and there's some, you know, a little bit of grit in there and you can see the difference. This one's a little bit dull with the skin and then that's just, you know, just the fruit itself. So next what we want to do is uh, we're going to cut this open because we don't want to put the seeds into the blender. It's going to make a horrific noise and probably not too good. So uh, once you cut this uh, canistel fruit open and once again this has like the texture of an avocado. It's kind of like sticky and gritty, you know, it's not too watery or anything. You're going to see inside there is uh, the uh, fruit. And once again, it's kind of like an avocado on the inside, and it has like a, one nice, or maybe sometimes more than one, large uh, seed here. Now, if you do want to grow this from seed, the seeds are viable, but they have a short shelf life. So if you do want to grow this, you need to keep them kind of moist and just sprout them. 
and I always like to eat the extra fruit off the in the pit. Man, this is going to be a good smoothie. Next, we're just going to cut through here and make sure there's no more seeds in there, which there's not. So we'll go ahead and put that in the blender, and we'll do the same thing with this. I think we're good, and that goes in the blender too. Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put one more can of in the blender, and then we're going to go ahead and open our coconuts. So here's our second D-skin uh, yellow sapote. We're going to go ahead and cut that open. And then this one, actually, I think there's a two seeds. There's one. And there's two seeds. And this one's actually a little bit, you know, I don't know, maybe almost overripe, but not quite uh, yet. So we're going to, you know, blend this up. I definitely like to blend up overripe fruits. You know, sometimes I don't like to eat overripe fruits. The texture's a little bit off, but when you blend it up into a smoothie, that's an excellent way to get it down. And uh, also increase the liquid availability in the fruit. And in this case, because it's kind of a chalky, uh, you know, hard-boiled egg-like consistency, adding another liquid to it, in my opinion, is a good idea. Next, we get to open the coconuts. Let's go ahead and we'll move this cutting board out the way. And now opening coconuts are, you know, is a video in itself. I'm not going to really demonstrate that in this uh, video. But what I can say is that depending on the coconut, the age of the coconut, if it's really young or more mature, I have different techniques of opening uh, the coconut. But what it also relies on is the tools I have available. So I'm currently traveling and I'm not carrying my machete and other coconut tools with me. So I have only what's available here at the place I'm at. And we just have a standard Ginsu knife. So <laughs> that's what I'm using today to open the coconut. You know, I have even co opened coconuts with no knife and no tools in the airport. So if you haven't already seen that video, be sure to check that one out. You will be in for a good laugh. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and open these up really quick with my standard Ginsu knife and uh, put the water in the blender. So I was able to basically uh, take a big cut off the coconut here to take the big, uh, a big part of it off. Then I use a smaller knife to just dig a hole in, and this one's a little bit more mature than I had expected, but that's good. I, I'm definitely going to enjoy the young coconut meat that's going to go into the smoothie. And we're going to take a strainer, put that over the uh, Vitamix, and just pour this in, and this is slowly going to leak out. While that's draining out, we're going to go ahead and work on the next one. Alright, so we got that piece off. Now the goal is just kind of to poke around here and dig out the middle to get all the water out. This one might be just a little bit younger. All right, so I was able to make two holes. One's the air hole and one's the hole where all the coconut water is gonna come out. I think this one is drained sufficiently. All right, really nice. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pour this one out. This one's gonna have a lot of water. Look at that. Now the next part is to <laughs> crack this thing open which I'll probably go outside and beat it on the ground. <laughs> I decided to show you guys what I'm doing out here. I just uh, basically busted open one coconut on the ground to open it up. And uh, now we're gonna do the second one. Basically, I'm just taking it and uh, uh, look at that. Look at how easy this thing open, opens up right there. So I did what I did to do this. I did cut off the top and I cut off the bottom because that's what holds the coconut together. It's like a keyway. And then I did put a slice in it this ways and then along like the uh, equator but the opposite direction and then I just smashed it and it actually opened up fairly nice and easy. So you don't got to like be throwing these against the ground all crazy man style like I did in the airport if you have some tools to help you out. Now let's go inside and uh, put this delicious coconut meat into our smoothie. We're back inside with the coconut and I just simply wash this out really quick because you get shelf fragments and things that are not going to blend too well and not too fun when you're you know, drinking your smoothie and there's big chunks of stuff. So simply wash that out. We're going to go ahead and take our strainer. And, you know, I use a strainer for a reason because if you just dump the coconut in over the blender craft, you know, you're going to end up with, once again, some shelf fragment, fragments that are not fun to have in your smoothie there. So and next we're just going to simply take a spoon and we're going to scoop out all this nice, rich, delicious jelly meat. So this is like a spoon meat and, I mean, this meat is incredibly young. It's nice, soft, and succulent and uh, it's going to add a really nice milkshake type texture to our smoothie. So uh, we're going to go ahead and scoop all this stuff in there. So here's the meat of the third half of our coconut. And uh, finally we have this last half. 
Now you might be wondering, hey John, you know, I can't get those uh, Florida coconuts like the young ones you get in the husk where I live. What coconut should I use? Well, that's a good question. You know, I think I have other videos talking more about coconuts actually because coconuts are one of my favorite foods. Let's see. So normally in your area, the best coconut to use for this texture would be the Thai coconut, the young Thai coconuts. They're often available at Asian markets, sometimes also your local Whole Foods or specialty grocery store that carries a, you know, tropical fruits. Uh, they can get quite expensive depending on where you buy them. I generally buy those at the uh, Asian markets by the case where I find they're actually less expensive. Uh, let's see, you also can use besides the Thai coconuts, which look like a little yurt. So for those of you that don't know what a yurt is, it's like a little teepee on top with like a, a, a round um, cylinder on the bottom. So they look kind of funny and I have videos on how to open those guys as well. You can also use the Mexican coconuts. So the Mexican coconuts are usually either brown, which we know is what coconuts are. And I don't recommend those too often. Most times those ones, the, the water is kind of going nasty and the meat's actually really thick and you would not want to put all the meat into this smoothie. That would wreck it. But you can use the white Mexican coconuts, which I also have other videos on. Those are my favorite. And what I'll do on those is I'll use all the water out of those. And then I'll just take a very simple scraping or a light scraping of the meat on the inside because the meat is more mature. And when the meat gets more mature, it has a higher fat content. Now, there's nothing wrong with whole food sources of fat such as coconut meat versus, you know, eating coconut oil. Coconut oil is 100% fat, about 120 calories per tablespoon whereas in the coconut meat you know you are getting some levels of the fat but there's also fiber and other nutrients in my opinion that are good for us but nonetheless i, I recommend that you actually don't overeat your fat you don't because if the more fat you eat the slower you get because <laughs> it just kind of clogs you up a little bit so in general i recommend a fat percentage of total calories um you know anywhere is between 10 to 25 at the absolute maximum. I'd like to see more like around the 15 to 20 range is kind of what I eat. Sometimes I'll eat zero overt fats in my diet. And sometimes, you know, I'll have days where I eat a little bit more. And you know, that's based on the food availability and the best food that's available to me and also what my body feels like that day. So uh, there we go. That'll do it. So once we got the uh, coconut water, the coconut meat and the yellow sapotes or egg fruits in there. We're just going to simply blend this up. So there we go. I think that's all blended up really nice. You want to just blend it enough to get that coconut meat fragmented up and actually just it blends into like a creamy texture. I want to show this to you guys. Check it out here. I mean, check out this texture. Look at that. Look at that color, man. I mean, literally it looks like a hard boiled egg. I mean, these are some rich pigments. Actually, this the uh, sapote is actually really rich in provitamin A or the carotenoids. And it's the carotenoids that provide us the antioxidants that are really good for us. So once again, I'd like to encourage people to eat foods of all different colors. And this one's actually a nice bright yellow. And for a second, I want to talk about protein. You know, people always say, hey, John, how do you get your protein on a plant-based diet? Well, guess what? These yellow sapotes or egg fruits have about as much protein as an avocado. So even fruits contain protein and the leaves, definitely you want to eat your leaves. Leaves are high in protein, 50% of protein by calorie. So they have a lot of protein as well. But anyways, uh, I'm going to enjoy my smoothie and then we'll be back at you in a little bit to make our egg fruit pudding. Mmm. That's about as thick and creamy as one of those milkshakes you get at a fast food joint. But I guarantee you this one's 100% healthy. So I just drank about three glasses of this smoothie, man. This stuff is the bomb, but you don't have to take my word for it. I have a special guest on the OK Raw show here, and he's my good friend, Paul Nissan. And uh, actually, we're spending some time here with Paul at his tropical retreat down here in South Florida. And, uh, you know, I'm giving an extra one to Paul so he can tell you what he thinks of the canister on the egg fruit. Wow, this is one of the first fruits I've tasted when I came to South Florida. My friend had one, and the first tree I got in my yard was an egg fruit. Have you gotten a lot of fruits off that yet? Uh, actually, it takes a while, so I haven't gotten off mine, but I've gotten many off my friends. All right, These cool. are great, so I'm looking forward to this. This thing is the bomb. Once again, it's only two ingredients, young coconuts and canistel. You can keep it simple and... Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> this stuff is amazing, amazing man. Wow. 
got to come here to South Florida to just try that. Look at that, man. That's just rich in antioxidants. All right, so up next, we're going to make that canistel pudding. I'm sure you would agree, just like Paul, he loved that egg fruit smoothie, and actually so did I. Next, we're actually going to make something that was inspired by Paul because he, you know, eats a lot more egg fruit than I am living here in South Florida. I get to enjoy it when I'm visiting, you know, uh, South Florida or maybe places like Hawaii or other tropical areas. So uh, what we're going to do is inspired by Paul. He said, hey, John, you can eat that egg fruit like with some lime, screw some lime juice over it, you know, much like some people eat papayas, you know, to make it taste better. Because, you know, egg fruit can have like a nice chalky, you know, flavor and actually it's, very, it's actually really rich much like a pumpkin pie, like I don't know how many people that could eat a whole pumpkin pie to themselves, but eating egg fruits just by themselves, like I think I ate about two the other day and you know, I was about finished, that was about all I could handle. So I had a two in here, had the smoothie myself and some for him, and now we're going to make an egg fruit pudding. So, uh, so instead of like drizzling the lime juice on the egg fruit and eating it, you know, if you do that, the lime juice kind of gets all over, it doesn't quite mix well. I made an egg fruit pudding and all I did was simply we're going to open up the egg fruit, put it in a bowl, uh, juice some lime, squeeze it on top in there, and just mix it all up into a nice delicious pudding. Now the benefit of this pudding is that it will save a day or two in the fridge because you are adding some of the citric acid from the lime. It helps to preserve the nutrients and keeps the food fresher longer. That being said, I would always encourage you to make every meal you eat fresh. So make your food fresh and make enough to eat that meal. Most of the time I do that, sometimes I will have leftovers, so check my other videos for an excellent video on what I do with my leftover salads. That was a really cool video. Uh, so I, I guess before, without further ado, let me show you how to make this recipe. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, you're going to take uh, basically one small egg fruit for one small lime because this happens to be a larger egg fruit. We're probably going to use two limes today. So I'm going to add one lime in now and then one lime in later. So when picking a lime, it's very important. You want to get the nicest... Uh, lightest yellow-ish color lime as possible. You don't want to try to get the dark green limes. They're not quite ripe. You want to get them when they're turning. So you can see on this side of this lime it's nice and dark and this one's actually a lot lighter. And sometimes there's even limes that are called limes but they look like they're lemons because they're yellow and actually those are the ones you want. So this one looks like the ripest one here. So we're just going to juice this into the bowl. You don't need some fancy juice or nothing. I take the lime. I'll roll it on the countertop. This kind of like roll breaks up some of the fibers in there, so more juice is going to come out. Even tap it down, Ugh. <laughs> and then uh, we'll just basically cut it in half. Luckily, this one doesn't have any seeds. Mmm, hey, limey! And then we're just going to squeeze the juice into our bowl here. Now, it would help if you had a lime squeezer. If you're really anal, you could actually put this in like a nut milk bag and just squeeze the bejeebies out of it. And, uh, you know, you won't get any pulp, but I like the pulp, you know, it will give this uh, recipe some texture. So there we go, we got some lime juice with the pulp in there. Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, skin this canistel. So once again, you can use the skin on the canistel. You know, I prefer not to, especially when making culinary recipes. Because the skin texture will just kind of make it a little bit different. Plus, I'm not entirely sure these are, you know, as organic as I would like them to be. So we're just going to very simply take the knife and uh, peel this canistel, get off all that skin. It looks like I got all that skin off, we're just going to go ahead and simply cut this guy in half and show you the inside. And once again this side, oh, there's a seed in here, so if this one's so large, there's a nice big seed in there. Here's the uh, nice large seed right here, we're going to take that out and we're just going to put the rest of this canistel in our bowl. And uh, once again, this side here also has one nice large seed. So we're going to just go ahead and stick that in the bowl. And the next thing we're going to do is just take a spoon and mash it up. You're going to mash that canistel up and mix it with that lime juice. Now the texture of this canistel is kind of akin to like a hard boiled egg when you are mixing it with more liquid. You know, it does get a little bit more liquid. So, you know, canistel by itself without any extra liquid, it's kind of hard. I mean, look at that. But once we mix in these two limes, it's going to be, you know, more of a nice uh, pudding consistency. Actually, this would make an excellent breakfast. Well, I think I had that smoothie for breakfast. This is probably going to be my lunch. <laughs> this is kind of like actually like a, a guacamole, you know, kind of like how you make a guacamole. Like, it's like that kind of consistency. 
And there are a few chunks of the canister in there that aren't actually getting, you know, chopped up, much like chunks of guacamole if you're making guacamole. I mean, look at that. This stuff is super thick. <laughs> next, let's go for that next lime. I think this is the next ripest one. We're going to roll it on the table a little bit. It's like cracking an egg. <laughs> All right, so we're going to cut this guy in half. And we're going to squeeze that juice out. Oh, I like to squeeze the juice. Give me some juice, you limey. Yeah, this one had considerably more juice than that first one. Once again, I just like to take the edge and scoot that along the edge, and we'll get a little bit of that pulp and a little bit more juice out in there. Now, you know, this recipe would really be good if you use what's called sweet limes. Sweet limes are a type of lime that are actually having, like, very low acid. I have a friend that can't eat acidic foods, and actually I gave him sweet lime juice in a recipe. He wasn't even bothered by it. But you got to make sure you get ripe sweet limes. As fruits ripen up, the acidity levels go down, and most people are used to those you know, store-bought limes and store-bought citrus where, you know, they're not picked as right as possible because if they were, they'd be spoiling really quick. And the storekeeper uh, would lose their investment in their inventory. So it's very important, in my opinion, to get uh, citrus fruits as close to the source as possible, including growing them yourself if you possibly can, or at minimum, going to the farmer's market and supporting local farmers. So that's uh, pretty much the rest of this lime. And now we got a lot of liquid and yellow sapote or egg fruit in there and we're just going to mix this up. And this is going to become more of a creamy like consistency because we are adding that liquid in there. So now it's instantly getting more kind of watery, not quite to the smoothie texture that we had earlier, but nonetheless, it's definitely a little bit thinner than it was before I added it. The super mixer. All right, there you go. Look at that. Nice. Mmm. Nice, rich, thick, and creamy. Looks like a nice cereal, man. Let me tell ya. Mmm, that's super delicious. Hope you enjoyed this episode today, learning more about the canister fruit, one of the wonders of the tropics, and how to make two simple recipes. Now, if you don't have canister, don't fret. These recipes like this can be made with other fruits. You could simply do the same thing with an avocado and lime, and maybe add in some blueberries or add in some strawberries. And that'd be work, that would work great to make a great pudding. You could do this kind of thing with bananas. Massive have bananas and some lime. That sounds really interesting. Uh, with the smoothie, you could basically do any fruit and the coconut. So oftentimes I'll do papaya and coconut, or mango and coconut, or banana and coconut. Whatever fruit you have, you could always make simple yet delicious things using a few ingredients that are super helpful. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRod.com, encouraging you to always eat your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.